martial artist and have dreams of traveling to China, then one of the cities on your itinerary should be Dongfang. Why Dongfang? But the most important reason is, of course, Dong Fang is the closest city to the Shaolin Temple, birthplace of Kung Fu. To get to Dong Fang from the west coast, you most likely have to fly through Beijing. From Beijing, it is then on to Zhangzhou. Zhangzhou is the closest airport to Dong Fang. And to get to Dong Fang, you will either need to hire a car or take the bus. I'm going to concentrate on three places to see in Dungfeng, and one that is nearby, but worth a visit. Just before you arrive at the gates of the Shaolin Temple, you will come across the exit for the Yangtai Temple. It is worth a visit. Yangtai Temple was built in 521 AD at the foot of Zijin Peak of the Taishi Mountain. The temple was named Yangtai in honor of the Northern Wei Dynasty Emperor Zhao Ming's younger sister, Princess Yangtai, who became a nun at this temple. It is the only nunnery in the Songshang area and the earliest nunnery in China. It was renovated in the 1990s by the nun Chu Yu Rong. Much closer to Dongfeng, on the northern edge of the city, is the Songyang Academy. Originally constructed in 484 AD, Songyang is one of the four classic academies of historic China. It was a private school devoted to Confucian learning. It is also famous for having two cypresses on the grounds. These cypresses were thought to be over 4,000 years old. The cypresses were given the rank of general by the Emperor Lu Che. Supposedly, if you look into the spreading branches of the senior general, you can see representations of the three great sages of China. One of the oldest Taoist temples in China is also located near the eastern edge of Dongfeng. The Zhongyue Temple was constructed over 2,200 years ago and has over 400 various buildings. In the Qing Dynasty, under orders from the Emperor, the temple was remodeled to resemble the Forbidden City in Beijing. In the first courtyard stand four iron statues 11 feet tall. They were built in the Song Dynasty to guard the temple. Supposedly, you can rub their bellies to gain strength. At the top of the grounds are two impressive halls filled with hundreds of statues of gods and demons. Each is attended by two smaller statues, and all of the statues are unique in design. No two are alike. This is still a working temple. If you are fortunate, you might be able to witness a Taoist ceremony while you are there. Palaces in the central area of the temple are dedicated to the four cardinal mountains. The walls in each palace are covered with murals depicting the history of China. If you can break away from your martial training for a bit, the trip to the Lung Meng Grottoes in Luoyang is definitely worth your time. Located about 40 miles west of Dongfeng, 
The Lungmon Grottoes is a UN World Heritage Site composed of hundreds, if not thousands, of representations of the Buddha. The Buddhas come in all shapes and sizes and stretch for nearly four kilometers along the Yi River. It might not get the press of the Xi'an warriors, but it is equally impressive. Besides historic sites and cultural relics, Dengfeng is also home to its main claim to fame, martial arts schools. There are dozens of them. Some of them, like Tago, have up to 15,000 students. And to understand why Tago is one of the top five schools in Dongfeng, you merely need to visit its training ground. But let's face it, the reason people travel from all across the world to Dongfeng is to visit the famous Shaolin Temple. The Shaolin Temple is now part of a big sprawling complex. From the ticket booth to the temple itself is a mile long walk, taking you past hotels, monk living quarters, and the Shaolin Temple's own Wushu training facility. The temple itself is quite large, with something to see or experience around every corner. In the main courtyard are steles commemorating abbots and events from historic times to the present. In one courtyard you can see the warrior monks demonstrate. In another, you can see where their forefathers poked holes into trees with their fingers. Some of the buildings are stuffed with statues. You can find stelae of Bodhidharma near statues of the Buddha. The temple isn't the only site to explore in the complex. Further up the road is the Pagoda Forest. The pagodas commemorate the abbots and monks of Shaolin's histories. They date from the Tang Dynasty to the present day. There is also a gondola ride up the mountain to see Bodhidharma's first disciple, Huayku's temple. The four wells that Damo created to help heal Huayku are still on the temple grounds. One of the most impressive things to see and do is to hike up the trail to Damo's cave. It's a very steep hike you don't want to avoid. <laughs> Legend has it that Bodhidharma spent nine years in this cave meditating. When he came out, he had the origins for Chan Buddhism and Kung Fu. If you continue up the trail, you're confronted by the giant statue of Bodhidharma himself. Looking at it and surveying the valley below, you can only wonder how did they get this massive statue to the top of this mountain. This is only a small sample of all that Dung Fang and the Shaolin Temple have to offer. To get the full experience, you must make the journey for yourself. If I have chi, is no.